exercise has tremendous benefits for mental health, for your well-being and for your happiness. Darius Hyman spent eight years in the United States Marine Corps where he facilitated combat conditioning and hand-to-hand -hand combat tactics. Darius also spent six years in the United States Navy Reserve where he was a certified fitness leader. During his time as a personal trainer, he has worked with Division I athletes as well as trained Special Forces soldiers. He became my brother in arms during our time in the Marines and he is now going to explain exercising and nutrition in a way that we police officers can understand it better. Darius Hyman, how you doing? Doing well, Scott. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. All right. So today you're you're basically going to be telling us, us police officers, how we can get in shape, how we can stay in shape. My first thing is this. Here, here's my first concern. A lot of police officers, including myself, work 12-hour shifts. It's just really tough to make time during a 12-hour shift. Do we need to work out five days a week in order to be in shape? Can we work out 20 minutes before going in for a 12-hour shift, how can we make time and how much time do we need to exercise to stay at kind of an optimal performance level for physical fitness? So that is a great, great question. And I think that is the million dollar question everybody wants is exactly <laughs> how much do we uh, need to work out? All right. So diving into it, uh, obviously it's a mindset, you know, working out seven days a week for the sake of working out is not necessarily the end all be all five days a week isn't necessarily the end all be all three days a week of structured work and workouts will be ideal and be beneficial okay. to anyone. So you're looking at the recommended amount is about, you're looking at 90 minutes a week. So you're breaking that up into 30 minutes a day for three days a week. Right? So that's not a tremendous amount of time considering we all get 24 hours in a day. So can I find 30 minutes or 90 minutes per se out of a week to uh, dedicate that to working and exercise my body. Ideally, you know, if you're wearing lots of equipment, your body is under stress as is. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at a, an additional, you know, 20 to 40 pounds in just equipment alone. So your body is working out. Um, so maybe the workout isn't an exact weight bearing workout, but it could be dedicated to some cardio, something to strengthen your heart to help the blood flow. It can be dedicated to stretching um, in a sequenced manner. It could be also exercise and body weight. So, you know, using things that you have at your disposal, push-ups, um, planks, things of that nature, body squats. So those are some of the things that I like to, you know, employ for those people who have those super demanding, um, also physically and mentally taxing jobs is making sure that you're looking at it from all dimensions. Okay, great. Well, you explained in a way where it made sense and it didn't seem as daunting knowing that 30 minutes at some point, three times a week is, is a good starting point. And obviously you can work your way up from there, right? Right, a great starting point. So another one of the tactics that I employ for people who are shift workers, just to have some consistency, is say 10 to 15 minutes a day five days a week. Now we're bringing it down from the duration of 30 minutes, bring it down to 10 to 15 minutes, but for more days a week. And it's all about finding a rhythm. Um, and, and a rhythm is really tough whenever your shifts are very dynamic, you know, from week to week, you know, your schedule could change. So, you know, having your own natural rhythm where you can get it in for 10 to 15 minutes, you can find that um, through your shift as well. So some of the things uh, that we do during those little short intermissions where you can exercise is being able to do some body squats, being able to do some forward lunges. You know, those are kind of foundational to me because I'm like, you know, your, your, your lower body is the, the kind of the tree trunk of things. So being able to work your legs, uh, being able to do some kind of pulling movement and some kind of pressing overhead movement to keep your shoulders engaged as well. When we're doing these workouts at some, sometimes like, like I will sometimes do 10 minutes or 15 minutes before going into work 12 hours, just because, well, like when the shift starts at seven, the job's 25 minutes away and you got to put all the, spend all enough time getting ready and putting on all the gear. Are we talking 10 to 15 minutes of like 
physically pushing yourself to the absolute limit or just kind of getting your heart rate up or feeling the burn just a little bit, so to say? What, what level of exertion do we need to know that we gave it a good 10 to 15 minutes? So real quick, to kind of lay a, uh, a foundation, you have to have a structure. Going back to, you know, saying that we're going to do things that are for our legs, we're going to do things that are for our core, we're going to do things that are pulling for our back as well as for our shoulders. Having a having some kind of skeleton, a lot of times people, they go into the gym and they're just going through the motions or they're talking, they don't have a plan. So we do wanna have a plan. So we want one day that we're able to hit lower body. We want one day that we're able to dedicate to pulling, which is your pull-ups, that is your rows, that's something that is hitting your back, which is incredibly important for you know, our, for the job of law enforcement and first responders, if you have to, you know, grapple someone down to the ground, if you have to put someone under a string. Um, the overhead press, we're, we're doing that all the time, you know, lifting things up over our head. And it's incredibly important to have strong shoulders as well. But the flexibility and being able to stretch is another discipline of working out. So not necessarily going all out to max exertion, but something that gets your heart rate up that may get you to break a little sweat. But we're not talking about going all out, pushing yourself to the max to fatigue before a shift. That's not what we're saying. But when you get your blood flowing and you have a little sweat coming, uh, and you can do that in a rather quick amount of time if you're focused on what you're doing. And that means you're working out for 60 seconds with maybe a you know 20 second, like a Tabata, uh, where you do a period of time on and a period of time off. Uh, and it's nonstop. So even your breaks are, are kind of timed. When you do these things, you're able to actually create uh, a better balance in your thinking process, uh, faster response, and you being able to see things, heightened alertness. And it does the exact opposite of what you would think. Oh, if I work out before my shift, I'm going to be tired, you know, during my shift. But at, at, at most cases, you know, I say nine out of 10 times people are more alert because their exercise and their body is, is more warmed up for them to go into the shift. That's interesting. You said that people can be more alert and obviously being alert and aware is important. Are there any other mental aspects or, or benefits to working out? So one of the big things is your mood. It puts you in a better mood. Uh, you release endorphins and you release just the feel good chemicals. Uh, in your body. So, you know, you're going to be in, in a line of work where, you know, everything is very stern, you're very serious, but you also want to be uh, pleasant with the community, but in their times that you're not so pleasant with the community, but for yourself, for your own mental health, exercise has tremendous benefits for mental health, for your well-being and for your happiness. It builds confidence as well. Um, just that you know that you are succeeding by giving consistent effort, that you are giving a planned investment into yourself. So this is long-term gains as well. Also, you are an example. If you're a veteran police officer, if you're new, people are always looking at you as a role model. So you have an opportunity by being physically fit. That doesn't mean being Arnold Schwarzenegger, being some, you know, stage uh, ready physique body boat or anything like that, um, or you're ready to go compete in the Olympics, but you wear your uniform better. Um, you add years to your life um, as far as health and strengthening your heart. So you know, those are some of the benefits we, we know, but just the heightened libido as well, um, just your drive and your desire, which can wane whenever you have such a, a draining job. It is very rewarding, you know, just the benefits of having that as well. That's interesting. You said mood and confidence and confidence is definitely something that we police officers need, but also the appearance because people do look at the, the officer who is sloppy in uniform and completely out of shape, looks all disgruntled and disheveled. They're going to be viewed differently than the officer who's squared away in shape. I guarantee you that officer's going to have that initial impression on someone that they're dealing with. I know that for a fact. In fact, I went to a call one time where there were these rowdy teenagers in the neighborhood. They pointed at me and they said, we're not going to run because he looks like he can run. And I thought, man, thank goodness I look like I run, even though I know I can't. <laughs> but it was just the appearance of it. That's what worked. <laughs> You're human. I'm human. We're all going to have those days. M more often than not, 
I, I believe when we just don't want to work out. I mean, you do have to push yourself mentally and physically to do it. What do you do when, when you get that voice in your head saying, don't work out? You know, the couch is easier. Watching TV is easier. Just do that and, and uh, uh, give a good answer because I'm going to be taking notes and I encourage everyone else to take notes if you haven't been already. But uh, what, what do you say to that voice? How do you overcome it? So this is something I have to overcome and it happens uh, more readily than I would like. But motivation, I just read this quote, it said that motivation is a muscle. And the more you you build yourself up to be disciplined, to do things that you don't want to do, the more fulfilled you will be and the more consistent you will be. The way that I overcome it, I ask myself, and I want to speak candidly to you and you men and women, is that I ask myself, is my comfort more important than me taking care of my family? Is my comfort, is it more valuable than me giving it up to get something more valuable? So you think of, you know, I know that the men and women that are watching, uh, the brothers and sisters in arms, you know, you put your life on the line every day. So you will make an ultimate sacrifice. But when you are getting for me to get up and, and work out and to eat healthy, it is this sacrifice is more important than the comfort of me laying in bed. This sacrifice i'm giving up the comfort of eating something that might be a little good or something that's going to make me feel good so that's how i get over it in short i give up something uh something of value for something more valuable and that's the mind that's the mind switch i might just put that saying you just said on repeat in this video that made good sense and i've never heard it put that way so i'm glad you said that you mentioned you know 90 minutes a week does it have to be weights? Does it have to be cardio? What would you recommend for a police officer uh, to, to do? If you create chaos for yourself, then the chaos outside will never bother you. So it's that old saying like the enemy, if there's no enemy within, there's no enemy outside that, will, that can harm you. So create chaos for yourself. So I'll do something simple. It'll look like this. I'll do pull-ups and push-ups for five minutes. So I do as many pull-ups as I can do. Maybe I'm up on the bar for, you know, five minutes, not five minutes, for maybe 30 seconds, right? And I'm just letting myself down really slow. Or maybe it's like a flex arm hang and I really flex my core. I'm flexing every part of my body while I'm up there. When I can't hold it anymore, I go down and I do push-ups. So maybe I'll set a clock and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna do 10 seconds of pull-ups. And then I'll do 10 seconds of push-ups. I'll go back up on the bar and I'll just repeat it for five minutes. That right there will get you, your, your breathing will increase, your heart rate will go up, and, uh, and that's one great exercise. For five minutes, it can be so valuable. You can go into a lunge set where you're lunging for 30 seconds, and then you do squats for 30 seconds, and then you take a 15 second rest, you repeat, you do this for five minutes. You have your 10 minutes where you hit your upper and your lower body. This is one of my favorite sets for uh, people who have long uh, shifts because um, you can break this up and you can do it anytime. You know, maybe you do it right before you get a, a bite to eat or you do it um, maybe 30 minutes or an hour after you eat, uh, depending on how your schedule is. You just throw it in, something like that. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. I <laughs> When you talk about, doing those kind of exercises. Heck, I do them on night shift just to stay, help stay awake. If, if we exercise, that's great. But if we eat bad, the exercising means nothing, right? So your basic diet, uh, nutrition plan, what, what would you say? How, how would you make it easy? Because there's a lot of officers, I myself at times have said, I know I need to eat better, but that that's, that's all we know. Just, we know we need to eat better. What, what would you say to make it easier to approach versus making it very complicating and confusing. So we talk about the stress that you're under, whether it's the heightened alertness, whether it is just the demanding schedule itself and the demands of the boss, your superintendent or you know, your sergeant, your lieutenant, whoever's in charge, you know, you have these stress on your body. Food can stress you or, or food can heal you. So look at food as either healing you or it is stressing your body um, based on how hard your body has to work to try to squeeze some nutrients out of it. So I'm a very, I can, I can look at the minute things of 
uh, macros, and that's based on your height and your weight and your body composition. But simply put, you know, you want to make sure that you are drinking plenty of water. You're mm -hmm. eating plenty of, of whole foods, um, high, getting away from the highly processed foods is kind of step number one. What, what would you say the whole foods are? So your whole foods, anything you can pick from the garden or you can get straight from the butcher. It hasn't been processed. It doesn't come out of a box. It's not coming out of your pantry. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, well, go on. What, what you were saying about avoid the quick process stuff. It's just so saying if you get enough of the good stuff in you, you won't want that much of the bad stuff. So the garden, things straight from the butcher that um, aren't heavy in trans fats or highly super greasy foods, right? Uh, then your body won't want that much of the bad stuff, getting away from the empty calories. So think of something, the difference of like oatmeal versus a box of cereal. So oatmeal is, you know, your whole grains and, you know, those things that haven't been processed and you're able to just boil it down. You're able to get protein, you're able to get fiber out of it and it fills you up. If you eat two, three bowls of cereal, you know, the same amount of calories, your body's not getting a very nutri nutrient dense value from the servings that you're getting out of there. So trying to get more to the whole foods is going to solve a lot of the cravings that you may have for, uh, for the junk. Not saying okay. that I don't like, I say the yummy food because I'm, you know, in favor of eating, you know, and enjoying good food, but I have to get enough good stuff in me first. People that are in really great shape like yourself and they talk about nutrition, they go into all these complex terms that just confuse me and discourage me. So I appreciate it. And I know others appreciate you putting it simply. You've helped us lay a good foundation and I'm grateful that you took the time. I know there's obviously a lot more to it, but for those who are not well-versed in exercise and eating right, but are in law enforcement and just want to make that next step, you've helped give enough information just to get started. So this is a good foundation. And I look forward to maybe having you back on where we can build up from there. Can I give one more thing, Scott? Yeah, I was about to say, if you want to wrap up with anything and also please mention where people can find you for more information. Perfect. All right, one thing I want to wrap up on, and this is an easy applicable, you know, do right now is go out and walk for 10, 15 minutes, walk. And that means like no weight bearing equipment on or any, any stress. The value of walking is good for your parasympathetic system. That means like the part of your body that helps heal and recover, walking does that. Find some relaxing activity to do every single day. And that's not a hard ax. If you can do this five days a week, then you're gonna be an A plus student. If you can do it three days a week, you're a B student. If you do it twice a week, you get a C student. C's get degrees, I've heard. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so walking um, is one of the best things you can do just to relax your body and allow you to kind of decompress. Um, make sure that you're not overthinking it. Uh, simply get out and you can move and any activity you've ever done in the past that gave you benefit, like kind of look at your history, whether it was a sports activity that you did, find those things that you love that have worked in the past. I don't mean like um, crash diets or these crazy, you know, super intense, you know, have you laid out on the ground and that's not something that you intend to keep up long-term. The things that you enjoy, do those things and you will see a major, major life shift and it doesn't happen overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. So, Take it day by day. Meet yourself and love yourself exactly where you are today. Because if you don't love and appreciate the body that you have now, then, you know, this is all, this is the only body that we have until they come up with some new biotech. But uh, <laughs> so that's it. You can find me on, uh, on Facebook at, um, at Higher Training, that's H Y I E R, uh, Higher Training. Instagram as well at Higher Fitness, that's H Y I E R Fitness. And, uh, and I do have a YouTube um, where I'm going to be posting some more exercise. That's just Darius Hyman. 
Uh, D-A-R-I-U-S, Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N. Awesome. Well, I will put links in the about section, the description section of this video below. I'll put those links down there so people can find them. Please go down there right now and click on those links and learn more that you can about exercising. Uh, knowledge is ne not necessarily power. You, you know more than you know now. Now you actually have to act on what Darius taught you. And I I mean, heck, you, you enlightened me, especially when it came to stay away from the, the food that comes in boxes. I'm guilty of that stuff. Hey, I really appreciate it. I really do. Uh, if, to all those watching, if you did like the video, please click the like button below, subscribe to this channel and click that little bell notification. So when I do come out with a new video, uh, hopefully Darius will be in ones in the future. You'll be notified. Uh, take care and God bless. Thank you again, Darius. Bless you. Thank you. Do not forget to secure your copy of the book, 101 Health Tips for Police Officers. The link to get it is below.